Hai de zis ceva! This is Jaila. Welcome to our new video. In this episode, we will be talking about the potential career for a graduate in the Bachelor of Health Sciences program. To prepare for this video, me and Ella did a lot of research. We went through a lot of websites, uh, mainly the Queen's website, but also websites of different associations and different universities. We started off by going to the Queen's Bachelor of Health Sciences website. There is a careers path page where it listed all the potential career paths. And basically today we will be going down the list because there's a lot to cover so we will divide it into two episodes. In this episode we will be talking about health policies, education, health administration, research, and also occupational therapy. We will be discussing more stuff in our next episode. So stay tuned! The first one we want to talk about is health policy and regulations. In the field of health policy and regulation, there is different job titles, for example, like health policy and regulation analyst and also health policy advisors. These jobs require you to have at least a bachelor's degree and also you have to have taken courses about health policy, public health, and politics. Political analysts work by trying to change, adjust, or implement new policies to the interest of his or her employers. They need to have a strong understanding of political factions, interaction, and government legislations. Sometimes the individual will be required to seek out to politicians and also convince actions. They need to have the ability to research, analyze trends and data, and also financial modeling. They work long and fairly irregular hours with a combination of office work, field work, and travel when necessary. So this job, in summary to three words, is review, analyze, and report. In Canada, they usually get paid about 60k per year. Now I'll be passing on the stage to Ella to talk about education. Hi guys, I'm gonna talk about education today and different branches about education. The first is health journalist and people usually earn about $55,000 um, per year. You basically put content into media forms and spread the information to educate people on health knowledge. And you need social skills, communication skills, and you need to know how to use different types of social media. You also need to know how to edit videos, some basic video editing technique is required and graphic design skills is very important also. Degrees in public health, communication and education are encouraged. You can take global public health track in health science faculty at Queen's and that's a very good track to get you started on your career path. Next is a community health educator which is also similar to the career that I mentioned before this. It's still like educating people with different forms of media but might not be exclusive to social media. You might be working in a hospital or a school or different facilities to educate people about health knowledge. People usually earn around $60,000 a year. Bachelor's degree in health, wellness, and human development are all very good program to think about. In some provinces, licensing is required. Taking public health course in undergrad is a good choice. Queen's Arts and Science faculty has relevant courses for you to pick. The next is community health worker. People usually earn around $60,000 dollars a year. Also, Queen's Art and Science faculty offer courses related to this career path in health study field. In Toronto, people actually get paid less. It's around $50,000 a year. So now you guys know that this career is not actually a good choice to do in Toronto. People usually do health education or health promotion with a job training on site to start their career. Community health workers share information with health educators and health providers. They discuss health concerns with individuals. They do informal counseling and social support. They conduct outreach programs and they facilitate access to healthcare programs. Next position is health content provider. People usually earn around $60,000 a year. A bachelor's degree in arts or health sciences or a combination of relevant courses are good to start this career path. This job involves brainstorming, creating evidence-based content, programs, and resources. 
Queen's Arts and Science Faculty offer relevant resources and courses. Taking some communication courses help you to get the foot in the door. And media design courses are very helpful. Design Thinking, E-N-I-N-140 is a course code, is a beneficial course to take. Please pick Entrepreneur and Innovation undergrad when you choose this course in Solus. Work experience required or suggested are designing content for mobile or online environments. You should have media production and graphic visual design skills such as using Adobe Illustrator. Have strong research and analytical skills and the ability to learn about new user populations quickly. So back to me, I will be talking about administration and management. For those of you who don't know, there is various job titles in the administration and management field. For example, like office assistant, receptionist, but also medical and health services manager, and also marketing manager, medical record technician, health information specialist. So there is a ton and they can be working in different settings as well, like hospital, clinics, um, private either private or public clinics, and rehab facilities. So this job, similar to health policy, needs you to have taken courses in health policies and courses in management and business. Most of them require you to have either a certificate or a master of health administration after you complete your bachelor's degree. They usually deals with regulatory affairs and overall health management policies. They keep record of medical and office supplies. They inform employees and other staff of policy changes and also create work schedule and coordinate between different staff members. Thus, they need to have a comprehensive knowledge of medical terminology and healthcare policies. The average salary for someone who's working in health administration is about 40k per year in Canada. So next, I will be talking about graduate research. So there's actually a lot of ways for you to continue doing research after you graduate. The most commonly known way is to complete your master's degree. I know this doesn't really sound too much like a career because it's kind of like a part of your education. It's definitely a path for you after undergrad, so that's why I decided to include it in this video. Master degree typically takes about one to two years for you to complete. It's a full-time degree and the purpose of it is for you to gain more professional knowledge and of the field that you're interested in. Depending on the program, you either gain more lab skills or clinical skills. You can go to the Queen's Graduate Study website to see a list of programs that's offered and I believe you can do the same thing to other universities as well to find your program of interest. In the Queen's Graduate Study page, for example, you can click on the program that you're interested in and they'll show you a list of overview, what the program is about, the faculty members involved, which will be helpful when you're contacting an advisor for your thesis, and also the requirements for the program. And the requirements for the program are really different based on what they are about. You should definitely look into that yourself. You do not need to have a prior experience in research to get enrolled in master program, but it's definitely preferred and it will be helpful for you as well because it can be a learning curve, quoting my friends here. In terms of funding, a lot of master students receive a stipend. I know different faculty offer different amount of stipend for their master students. There are also government slash federal scholarships available, such as NSERC or uh, SSHRC and CIHR. Yes. And there's also provincial scholarship and even internal scholarship available offered by Queens. There's also funding given by student-led initiatives. Definitely go see the funding award and scholarship paid at Queens. After master, we all know the next step of education is PhD. PhD takes a minimum of three to four, even five years for you to complete research and studies, as well as a thesis. Most will require you to complete your master before entering, but there are some exceptions as well. In terms of funding, Queen's University give a minimum stipend of $18,000 per year for a PhD student that's eligible. And now let's talk about actual jobs. So research assistant is a job that you can apply for after you graduate. Um, and even before you graduate as undergraduate student, but they definitely prefer a graduate student. Faculty members that engage in extensive research usually will recruit students that's in the same field of research to help them to complete their studies. You will be assisting research, um, you might be um, helping out with labs, you might be helping out with data analysis. There's a lot of different tasks that you can be assigned to depending on the particular study. Um, as I talked about, it's open to all type of student, but for undergraduate student, it's mainly a summer working education position, something called SWAP. 
that is when professor post their own studies and research in the my careers page and then you can see different positions available and again master student postdoc phd student are definitely encouraged to apply too the faculty often offers stipends for research assistance as well another position not research particular but student academic focus is teaching assistant TAs. To become a TA, you can be undergraduate, you can be graduate. If you are undergraduate student, you have to have done really well in the course that you want to TA. And for master student and PhD student, you have to be doing well in your GPA as a whole. Mostly it's a part-time job. You will be helping out with tutorials. You will be helping out with grading. You get paid based on your hours of work a week. And I believe there are um, teaching assistant funding packages as well. So that's about what I want to say for research. And let's give the field back to Ella. So the last career we're gonna talk about this week is occupational therapist, which is also called OT. And people usually make around 77,000 a year to 100,000 a year based on your work experience. Usually a health science or health related program can help you get started with your career or if you're an arts and science faculty it also does you the work and after your undergrad usually you go to an ot school uh, for professional training so it's kind of like medical school but for occupational therapists you guys all probably heard of occupational therapy school physiotherapy school and those professional schools Queens does have rehabilitation therapy schools and OT and PT schools are all under it. The rehabilitation science program is also in the school. Kinesiology courses is also helpful. It's good to take some anatomy, cell physiology, and psychology courses as OT jobs are basically communicating with people and help them carry out everyday tasks. So if you're in different stages of life, such as kids, your main job is to play. You have to help them to know how to play and carry out everyday tasks such as eating, dressing, because they might have motor functions or some kids have problems with writing, like printing letters or reading or having trouble staying focused. And bigger problems might be have emotional problems, so they can't really communicate their emotions with the outside world and their parents. So they might be having tantrums. You have to figure out why and carry out a plan for them. And we're gonna talk about physiotherapy next week, which involves more helping the patient with your hands, like helping them to regain physical ability rather than carrying out a plan for them and letting them do it by themselves with their family supporting them. You're the one who actually helps with the movement more of their body parts. And when you go to OT school, usually you get placement. But you can still get by with an anatomical sciences program for masters and still be able to carry out your career plan. OTs work with different people, kids, adults, youth, people who have mental problems. There's a lot of settings for OT to work in, such as homes, schools, hospitals, public and private facilities. They usually build a close-knit relationship with one or a few patients. So that's about the end. I know many of you guys might be really anxious about your future right now and about which career you want to go into. Um, that's why we decided to make this video that hopefully helps you to reduce your anxiety a bit and give you a little bit more of an idea uh, of what you wanted to do and a little bit more information as well. Um, definitely don't be anxious. If you are in first year, then take courses that you're interested in and um, if you are in the higher upper years we mentioned the courses that would be beneficial for you if you do decide to pursue one of the career paths that we mentioned so hopefully the content was helpful and, um, and those are just the common pathways for health sciences obviously you can go pursue other stuff that you want i'm sure that there must be some way that you can achieve that yeah and so in the next video we will be covering more career path like medicine PT, um, what, neuroscience, nutrition, no, the pharmacology. Yeah, so more career that's not even listed on the Bachelor of Health Sciences program website. Oh, we did a lot of research for you guys. Yeah, so 
subscribe to our channel. So you thank you for the, thank you for the subscriptions, guys. We love you a lot for the support, and I know it's not been long since we started this channel, but I'm very happy to see that so many people responded, like commented, and subscribed. Yeah. So thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.